this priest had posed a question in his homily, which is not necessarily a question, more just a statement that uh, that all of you who are young men should at least consider the priesthood. Uh, that doesn't mean all of you are called. It doesn't even mean many of you are called, but you're all called to at least consider it. Um, same thing with the young women, religious life. And so I, I kind of filed that away, but didn't necessarily um, really do anything with it until my sophomore year of high school when uh, um, kind of the object of my prayer to that point was to like win something uh, in sports. I'd played on a number of teams that had, you know, some good players, but we we didn't really have a whole lot to show in terms of like trophies, if you will, for, for her efforts. So I remember praying like to like win something. And so that sophomore year is when, at least for me, the Catholic faith that I'd grown up with it became a lot more real as to what's at stake. And uh, and that's where I'd say the idea of a vocation started coming in of like, okay, so we're all called to live this Christ-like life that our desires ultimately are eternal. So what, how am I going to live the Christ-like life? And that idea of like, well, maybe the priesthood just, <laughs> just kind of sprouted at that moment. While I was in high school, you know, it was that word percolating is definitely spot on. And um, and I'd say in college, I really started, you know, pretty actively chewing on the priesthood and, uh, and honestly felt like I was spinning my wheels and where, uh, some movement finally started happening when I was in this small group of guys that had been formed by this Jesuit. I think he was a scholastic at the time. He's, 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 he's a priest now, but was in formation and he put together this group called the Discernment Companions. It was about 10 to 15 guys, uh, four or five of whom have ended up being priests, either diocesan or religious. The other guys have gotten married. And, uh, but it was, it was super helpful just to recognize there were other guys asking the same questions. And that what about the priesthood question just would keep coming up intermittently. Um, and but ultimately didn't enter seminary at a at a college and went and worked in real estate appraisal in Spokane, and it was then that um, it was almost like I came to the why in the road where it had been warming up toward priesthood, but you know potential call to marriage was was making a lot of sense in terms of a career I had that was you know really enjoyed, uh, and then also kind of a budding relationship at the time. And so kind of the pivotal moment was being in adoration and kind of taking all of that into prayer at Gonzaga's student chapel. I ha happened to work about a mile from campus. And so I took my lunch break, actually. <laughs> and I was like, OK, God, like, what is it? Um, and, you know, there's this real sense of peace around the priesthood, um, even if I wouldn't have been able to really articulate what the next five to 10 years would look like, which is why when people would ask, where do you see yourself in five years, Justin? I I never really enjoyed answering that question because like I I don't know. But there was just this real sense of peace, even if again I didn't necessarily know what five to ten years down the road looked like. Um, whereas I had a better understanding of what five to ten years down the road looked like with say the married route. And that brought up a lot of like chaos, a lot of questions. It's sort of like a textbook example of discernment with, from St. Ignatius of Loyola, which is, you know, follow that consistent sense of peace. You know, that's the good spirit, the evil spirits trying to, you know, bring up chaos, what have you. Um, and so so that's what finally kind of tipped the scales after years of thinking about the priesthood, talking about it with people, kind of going back and forth between um, a potential call to the married life and and call to the priesthood. So that prayer and community piece, you know, we're, we're not. And I would say that that's true for any vocation, not just vocation of the priesthood, like ideally for person's called to marriage, they're taking it to prayer. And they're also asking people like, hey, like, would we be a good couple? Uh, I, I think those conversations just kind of happen naturally. But uh, but so similarly, it's like even just ask around like, gosh, you know, I'm thinking about priesthood. Like, I, I don't know, like, does that make sense to you? You know, and uh, um, so anyways, there's just so many analogies between the married life and priesthood and religious life. And so uh, um, so many things that almost come naturally to us in terms of discerning marriage also apply to priesthood.